Hi drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com. Welcome to this free mini song lesson as suggested over on my Facebook page. Speaking of which, I've just today posted a, a new song request post. Uh, you'll find it at the top of the page, um, nice big image. Uh, if you want to make your own song suggestions, please, then please go over to my Facebook page and post them beneath that post. Then others get to vote on them and then the most popular songs get chosen for future lessons, just like this was in the last post I made. By the way, the song is Touch Me by The Doors, drummed by John Densmore. And I've got two pages of transcriptions for you, giving you what I think are the most distinctive parts of the song, uh, probably the trickiest parts of the song as well. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six different sections that really give you a flavour of what John's playing throughout the song. Uh, and I'll start off by saying that uh, John, um, this song in particular, there's a lot of improvisation going on. Um, it's almost random, some of his um, grooves. The, the section, to se section to section, it makes sense, but within each section, the way he plays around with each groove is, is very, very improvisational. And so you'll be forgiven for, for um, taking this off the page and going, what on earth is that? Um, it makes sense in context with the, with the music, but just be aware that this stuff is very random and um, can be quite tricky. So it's definitely an advanced lesson. So at the beginning I've written here, all 16th notes are swung. So just very, very quickly, normally you play 16th notes with one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... When they're swung, we're going to count them one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and... It gives that sort of shuffle swing, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So our first groove occurs right at the beginning of the song. And we've got this, um, uh, this, this play between the floor tom and the high tom using the snare drum in between. Without going, well, just, just to give you a rough idea of, of the kind of feel he's going for here, is, for here is, and he does improvise this a lot, it's kind of this. That kind of feel, but within that he's, he's doing all kinds of improvisation. And the first two bars here give you an idea of how each section can, uh, how each section can be so different to each other. So the first bar, the two bar pattern for you, starts on the snare drum. You can use any sticking you like, but I've written it one and two and. So you could play one and two and, it doesn't really matter, I've written it one and two and. Then between the snare drum and high tom, and we get these ghost notes with the snare drum. Three E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, and then down to the snare drum for the last bit. Four E and, four E and a uh, one. We go into the next bar with an accent a uh, one, a uh, one, preceded by a ghost note. So that first bar, one and two and the E and a uh, four E and a uh, one. Into the second bar, one and two and. So it starts the same, one and two and a three, but we come in there and a three E and a four E and. The last bit, a four E and, are all normal volume. So that second bar slowly, one and two and a three E and a four E and. One and two and a three E and a four E and. Put the two bars together, one and two and the E and a four E and a one and two and a three E and a four I think I got that slightly wrong there with, with the um, ghost notes. Let me do that again for you. One and two and the E and a four E and a one and two and a three E and a four E and. So within that, we've got so many different um, ghost note variations being placed different places. So if when you're playing, this is the last time I mentioned it, when you're playing on this song, feel free to improvise as well. Don't feel you have to learn these parts note for note. Uh, John certainly wouldn't play the same thing twice. And so you don't have to either. Anyway, let's hear those two bars played up to speed without me yakking over the top. Here we go. So this next section occurs at 11 seconds. This is probably the trickiest part of the song for me to have worked out and also to play as well. It's a weird one. It sounds like there's some sort of echo effect going on on the hi-hat, but I don't think there is. I think he's just dynamically making it sound quieter as the bar goes out. Uh, it's a very strange feel, so I, I've tried my best to replicate the dynamics as best as I'm hearing, but it's not going to feel, it's not going to sound exactly the same because uh, of, of the, 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 the slight differences in, in, in volumes and texture of each note. All the notes are there, it's just the dynamics, the volume that's, that's so hard to replicate exactly what John's playing. Anyway, here's my best attempt at working out what you played there. It starts with, the, it's a two bar pattern again. One and two E and, ignore that click stick. One and two E and, so we've got this 
two E and, a little ghost note on the E of two there. Then our left hand comes up to the hi-hat and for the rest of the bar we get um, a three, E and, a four, E and, a one. We've got these off beats, open hi-hat notes on the E's and the U's of each beat. One and two, E and, a three, E and, a four, E and. So in between those ghost notes, a three, E and, a, those two ghost notes on the snare drum, are, well, are ghost notes, played quietly. Then the last two snare drums, four, E and, four, E and, a one. Four, E and, a one. So it's not only getting the hi-hats in the right place, but it's also getting the dynamics between the snare drum. And then finally, in the first bar, he adds the bass drum on the uh, of two in the E of three only. Just for those first two open hi-hats, we get the bass drum. So that makes it even more difficult to read off the page because you probably want to keep the bass drum going for longer, but that's not what John plays on the recording. So here's my best attempt at playing this. One and two, E and, a three, E and, a four, E and, a one. So you can see how the dynamics on the snare drum change there. A three, E and, a four, E and, a one. Then the second bar, very similar, except not. One, starts with a bass drum, one and two and a three, E and, a four, E and. So very, very similar actually. Uh, one and two and a three, E and, a four, E and. So it ends on the and of beat four and I believe just after that bar there's a floor tom being played on beat one before it goes into the next section. Um, so let's play those two bars together. One and two, E and, a three, E and, a four, E and. So there is an example of where I wanted to play my bass drum on the uh of three, and I sort of hovered and hesitated. I'll keep all these mistakes in because you'll probably find the same things happen to you. One and two, E and, a three, E and, a four, E and, a one and two, and a three, E and, a four, E and. And now I'll play, I'll now play those two bars up to speed for you. Uh, but be aware, this took me a few takes to get exactly right. So give yourself a break with this one. This is tricky. So then at 17 seconds, we sort of go into the next, uh, go into our chorus. And it's this four bar structure that, that John sort of plays every time before going into it. It's a, um, so the first bar we get one, the and a two, and those snare, snare and crashes come with the bass drum as well. One, a two, and then we skip over beat three and we get this three E and a four E and. Now you could play it left, right, left, right, left, right, but you have to come over your yourself a bit. So I find leading with your right hand makes it easy to go around the drums. Three E and a four E and. You can use whatever sticking you like. One E and a two and the E and a four E and. You can really hear the swung 16th notes in that one. Then he goes into one bar of ride cymbal, where I think he's just playing quarter notes up here and putting the bass drums in between the snare drums. One and two and three and four and. But we get this extra bass drum on beat three. One and two and three and four and. He improvises with the bass drum throughout this song all the time, by the way. Then the third bar, weirdly, he just goes to the hi-hats. Not weirdly, it makes sense, but it's, it's kind of, a, a, I find it a little bit jarring when I listen to this song. One and two and a three and four and. There's a little ghost note there on the uh of two just to look out. The rest of it's relatively simple. The hi-hat continues into the fourth bar. One and two and a. Uh, and then that's gonna lead us into three e and a, uh, four e and a. Uh. So the accent snare drums and the bass drums falling on three and four and with ghost notes on the snare drums in between. A three, E and a, four, E and a. So four bars together. One, E and a, two and three, E and a, four, E and one and two and three and four and one and two and a, three and four and one and two and a, three, E and a, four, E and a, one. And let's see those four bars up to speed. So then at 26 seconds, we get our first uh, sort of um, band stab section where the drums and the keyboard are playing together in unison. Um, and uh, basically John's playing eight notes up on the right cymbal and his left hand is doing all the snare drum work. So we get this pattern that sort of goes from the downbeat to the upbeat and then back again over the two bars. So we get one and two and a three, E and a four and. A little bit of left hand work there at the tempo required. One and two and a three and a four and. One and two and a three and a four and a four and. Second
second bar, very similar, but starts with the bass drum and snare drum. One and two and a three and a four. And exactly, in fact, the snare drum is exactly the same apart from the first note. So put the two bars together. One and two and a three and a four and one and two and a three and a four and. And let's hear, oh, by the way, before we do that, I just want to make a note for you that um, sometimes um, John is just pumping the bass drum throughout these sections. He might be playing, it's very hard to hear on the recording, but he might be playing something like. Um, so if you want to have the bass drum pump underneath it on all the eighth notes, make sure it's quiet because that's what you, what you don't hear on the recording. It's, it's very, very subtle and quiet. It's like a jazz technique where you're just sort of stepping the, the bass drum. So let's see those two bars up to speed. So then at 39 seconds, we get another section that uh, gets repeated a couple of times in the song. It's a four bar structure, very similar to what we had previously on the, on the first page. Starts with one, a two, and. So exactly the same rhythm, but this time we're not playing bass, snare, and crash together. Improvise differently. One, the and, a two, and. But we still get that same drum fill. Three, e and, a four, e and. The second bar is exactly the same. One, a two, and, the e and, a four, e and. It's the third bar that I wanted to include for this uh, for this example to show you how, how it changes slightly. So the third bar, we get one, two, and. It goes straight into the drum fill rather than one, two, and. It's one, two, and. And you can play a two, and if you wanted to over here instead. It doesn't matter. It then repeats it for beat three, three, four, and. And then we get this last bar, um, the fourth bar on the right symbol. One, and, two, and, a three, e and, a four. So you can hear there how we just played the bass drum on three and four um, <laughs> and nowhere else. So it's, uh, it really is, like I said earlier on, the bass drum is very much improvised throughout this song. One and two and a three and a four and. So the four bars slowly. One, a two and three and a four and. One, a two and three and a four and. One, a two and three, a four and. One and two and a three and a four and. And up to speed. So let's uh, find it 101, I wanted to include one last example of the bake the floor snare drum um, section where he's improvising with all the ghost notes, just to give you another taste of, of what he's playing in these sections, another two bars that are completely different to anything else he's played. So the first bar, we get one and two, e and a three, e and a four, e and. Even slower, one and two, e and a three, E and a four E and. Four E and feels weird. I want to play four E and, but it's four E and. Just a little four E and. Well, four E and. Which, I don't know, it just feels weird for me. I just want to play that and accented coming from the floor tom because you're coming over and it just naturally keeps that momentum going, makes it a, a, a louder note, I guess. Then the second bar, one and two E and a three E and a four and. And I've written it right, left, but I just play four and if you wanted to, doesn't matter. One and two, E and a three, E and a four and. So let's put the two bars together. One and two, E and a three, E and a four, E and. That's a bit dynamically rubbish. One and two, uh, one and two, E and a three, E and a four, E and. One and two, E and a three, E and a four and. And let's hear those two bars up to speed. So then later in the uh, second half of the song, and I must admit I wimped out a little bit, it's like a minute and a half of just drum fills going on, and I wasn't going to transcribe all of that. What I, um, uh, making myself feel better about it though, um, is the fact that it is very, very similar. Each, each bar is, is sort of using the same sort of rhythms, he's going around the toms in the same sort of way. I wouldn't really call it a drum solo, I call it just a set of drum fills. Um, it doesn't feel like a drum solo because it's part of the song, but it is nuts, it's a lot of improvisation. Um, and um, uh, if, if you wanted to play along to this song, 
then uh, I'm sure you could work out from what I've given you so far, the ideas he's using in that last section where he's just doing drum falls all over the place. There's nothing really complicated going on in that section, by the way. It's just all single strokes going up to the crash cymbals. Uh, it's actually a lot easier than the dum 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 that, that I find, that last section. So uh, forgive me that I haven't done the full transcription for that section. It's just, well, I, I, I didn't think it was worth your time because um, once you've seen how it's done, you'd realise that, oh, okay, I could have worked that out myself. I hope. So don't forget to download both pages of this uh, transcription from my website, for free of course. You can find both uh, these PDF pages, uh, the link beneath them, for them is beneath this video. Um, so have these printed out as we went through that lesson together, probably a bit late to tell you that as we come to the end of the lesson, oh well. <coughs> and as you're at my website, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And that's coming up to almost 500 full song lessons. Just like, unlike this lesson, I teach you the song from start to finish. Every single bar is included. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And like I said, I've got almost 500 songs on the website already, including at least one other Doors song, and I'm sure I'll be adding more Doors in the future. It's a popular request over on my Facebook page. Um, as a thank you for signing up, I give you even more. I give you hundreds of little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three eBooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next time, listen together, toodle pip. And happy drumming to you.